All right, my friends, how are you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of our Planet Zoo Build Jammy Conservation Park. And as a community, you continue to astound me with all your comments, all your likes, and all your involvement in the series. My friends, I've got a couple of little bits of admin I want to do before we crack on with today's episode. First and foremost, if you've not seen last episode, it's linked above right now, my friends. Uh, all is explained in that. Basically, there's going to be like no skipping forward for quite some time where the series is concerned because we've opened up quite a big land mass we're going to be working on that my friends so do check last episode out um you all got some fantastic comments in on the last episode um i'm not going to be reading all of the comments out in today's episode i'm just going to be reading three that basically helped me make my decisions for today's episode and uh kind of explains why we go in the direction that we do obviously the title of today's episode has kind of given it away but uh you know i, I still want to share with you the comments please all still continue to get your comments in just because they don't make it into episodes doesn't mean I don't take any notice of them every single comment is taken into account during the live streams we discuss a lot of the comments and uh, also most of your comments like get written down and they all get sort of like all the ideas end up getting put into the builds and stuff there's some fantastic comments that are obviously not gonna make it into today's episode but are gonna be used to improve this project going forward so please uh, do continue to do that do continue to like the video as well we didn't hit our like target on the last episode the like target is 50 likes if we do that we open up a square of my choice so do continue to like the videos as well my friends first up that I did want to talk about uh, in today's episode is in about two weeks time this channel is one year old which is pretty incredible as I punched the microphone yeah it's one year old in a couple of weeks time which is amazing uh, obviously Planet Zoo is the big game that we've been playing on the channel during the course we have done some other games as well uh, and I have got plans in place to be bringing you some new content um, you know we've amassed sort of like 1300 subscribers I want to say a massive thank you to everybody that's hit that subscribe button and you know nearly hundred and thirty K's worth of views which is in itself uh, astounding because this channel was kind of started just as a little uh, you know place for me to just chill and instead it's now kind of become my number one channel which is pretty cool and I absolutely love you the community for supporting me uh, on this journey to one year to 1300 subscribers to the views and hopefully on too many many more my friends so just wanted to say a big thank you for uh, helping me in the first year on this channel make it so blooming special but anyway let's get into today's episode shall we because um, chapter 3 is going to continue um, last episode we uh, completed the second um, reptile nursery fantastic little build people seemed really really happy with it in the comment section which is amazing because obviously uh, I did kind of go into that quite blind. I wanted to keep it with the same style as the other one. Uh, I will just kind of like head on over there actually and we'll take a good look at it. Uh, but yeah, in case you've missed last episode, but that's kind of what we worked on last time. It's, uh, you know, it's really, really cool. Pretty much finished off now. Got all the little bits and bobs done, uh, you know, off camera, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the area. Um, as we are in, you know, chapter three, we are kind of working on the beginnings of Africa, the beginnings of North America. Um, so there's lots and lots of different jobs going on at the moment. Uh, but it's one other thing that, for me, makes this uh, chapter in the story so exciting, my friends. Now, in today's episode, we are heading in to Africa. We're going to get the beginnings of Africa begun. Um, we are not moving forward in time. We are kind of stuck here at the moment because we are building all these projects before we uh, you know open up a new zone uh, that was explained in last episode and the one before so do check those out my friends in case you are a little bit confused at what's happening at the moment but I got a few comments that I want to read um, out to you guys um, that have a lot to do with uh, you know the direction that we're going in uh, in today's episode so we are actually going to be working on this area and uh, I've taken some inspiration from some of the comments um, Nightclive left a comment on last episode uh, that was read out with regards to you know the decisions I've made as well uh, and he kind of gets mentioned that's why I'm you know just for context sake I'm mentioning that to you guys um, so there will be no offerings of zones there will be a very sort of diluted live section in today's episode the majority of this will be focused on the build so I do hope you enjoy it my friends but anyway first comment I'm going to read out comes in from uh, Combat Wombat who has become a real regular in the comment section and actually i would say that combat one but probably deserves to have a name on the uh, conservation club wall and i really that's something i need to do i need to update that at some point but um email from zoologist sam hello jammy it's been a while since we've talked about um other than the trip to zoocon 
I've been keeping up with your part from the Daily Dodo, must say, love the work, but I got in touch with a friend and it seems they have a situation. A pack of wild dogs have grown a bit faster with time and uh, well, they don't have much room for the pack anymore. Sadly, they are used to people, so they can't be released. And well, you know how I am, always bringing animals to you. I was hearing about this Africa zone of yours and boom, a light bulb. That park of yours would be perfect for these painted dogs. I can see it now. Keep in touch and say hi uh, to that pup by a Peabody for me i'll have some other animals for you sometime most likely um so be prepared i've heard rumors of giraffe and an aardvark sincerely sam i love this comment i love this comment from you combat one Matt. you know how much i enjoy narrative because it helps with the huge story that we are building where jammy conservation park is concerned uh, you can kind of see the direction we're going in uh, off the back of that comment the second comment i want to read of the free uh, comes in from primal gamer uh, this week i uh, really like what you've done uh, this episode so the pit stop area is uh, very realistic and what zoos uh, do it in my opinion nursery turned out really well and as always I have a few suggestions uh, he was re- obviously referring to last episode um, my suggestions are I agree that yes the llamas should go in the pet and zoo area um, that was something that we actually discussed heavily in the live stream uh, what to do with the llamas and it has actually split the community down the middle which was a real surprise to me so uh, for now we have put a big pause on the llamas um, I like Nightclive's idea of a predator starting Africa I vote the hyenas due to the character they had. Um, I'd say their habitat have a non-pit habitat and keep them level with the guests view uh, maybe an African hut like viewing area and then another area for burrow viewing spot uh, where they would sleep um, I like the idea of the Arctic animals being the Canadian area and my final idea maybe for the start of Africa after all the foliage have a huge archway that's heavily themed because zoos tend to go all out for the African section uh, with the theming maybe some mass pots uh, animal silhouettes like lions or elephants it's all for me keep up the good work really really like that comment from Primal and hopefully when we get into the build section you're going to see the bits that I really took from that comment um, the last comment that I want to read today uh, comes in from Faneral and she's put um, I really like the new building how you kept the same concept as the old nursery jcp is looking beautiful obviously referring to last episode i agree with night clive regarding starting with the hyena or african wild dog might draw some more donations as well obviously money is a bit of a situation in the zoo at the moment i noticed by the new entrance staff door where the empty wall is uh, would be so nice um so those who arrive uh, doesn't need to open the car gate to enter the empty area you left behind the nursery uh can be used to make a merged walls african area for the staff when the square next to it is unlocked and again there was stuff in there that i really really like that there was obviously comments from lots of other people uh jareth veganitis sander alexis doris manuel um christian bates uh, john king banana dude all left really really fantastic comments and i appreciate your comments every one but those were the three that really stood out along with night clive's uh, comment on the previous episode so what we're going to be doing in this episode today is we are going to be starting africa um we are it was a toss-up. It was between the hyenas and the wild dogs um, because I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to start with more of a predatory animal and, uh, you know, I kind of had this idea in mind for either or anyway where those animals were concerned so this actually gets reworked here at the beginning you're going to see that when we get into the build section uh, but we actually change the, the 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 main road a little bit and uh, in here essentially we build a, a quite a large wild dog um you know um habitat uh, and along with it we kind of do some really really nice theming uh, basically there's not much more i can say i think the easiest thing for me to do now is jump into that build section and show you what i've made and so here we are ladies and gentlemen we are back in the zoo and you are about to see what i've been up to <laughs> in the last week basically obviously all based off the back of your ideas your comments and the stuff that we've just been going through my friends now as you can see the opening to this area is all changed it is all heavily foliaged i want you all to know the foliage is probably about 80 percent done uh, on the outside the habitat itself is 100 percent finished i'm very very happy with it but the foliage there is still work that needs doing i run out of time you know at the end of the day there's only so many hours in a day and there's so many so many days in a week isn't there so uh, i have basically tried to do the best that i can do but uh, let's do this because i kind of want to walk through i want to really immerse you in the experience that our guests would go through um so we are going to walk through this space here 
and this area here is where Africa begins. There's a little bit of path there. Just needs finishing off. I'm going to have to sort that out. Um, obviously, the Gemsbok is they're sort of included in Africa, but they come before because they were a bit of a filler, weren't they? But I guess you could say they are technically the first animal in the African area. But uh, yeah, this is officially where it begins. And uh, you are met, my friends, with this as you first walk in to the African area. Now, do not get me wrong. I still think this area needs some stuff. I'm really not sure. I didn't want to put too much on the path in front of uh, this beautiful part here but I do still feel like it needs something of what I was actually thinking of doing here which is very very different to what we've done with the uh, with the you know um, com the conservation club so far we've done conservation club walls um, we did one in the old reptarium we've done one in the new part near where the flamingos are what I was thinking of doing here was name plaques on the floor um, just to kind of break up this huge area that doesn't really do a lot so let me know what you think of that whether we should do name plaques on the floor here as another sort of conservation club area because I have noticed there's so many more people getting involved in the series even you know so, so six months into it still so many pe new people joining the series commenting and whatnot and getting involved and I would really like to get a few more names in here uh, if I could but um, other than that I'm really really like this area um Someone mentioned an arch. I think it was Primal mentioned doing like an arch. I decided to go with a sign in a flower bed instead. Basically because of how wide the path ended up being here, I couldn't really get the arch to work. And I think like here as well, the arch really didn't work right at the beginning. I didn't like it and I just needed to find a way that we could really fill this up with foliage, you know, trees and whatnot. Um, get the theming started in the area but at the same time, you know, let, let the guests know that you are entering like a very special part of uh, jcp basically and uh, yeah this is this is essentially what i come up with um the into africa is what i've called the area it is in honor of london zoo's african area that's what theirs is called and i wanted to you know just throw a, a, a little sort of homage to, to london zoo which is one of my favorites uh, that i go to on a regular basis basically so into africa is the name of the area i know i probably should have offered that up to you the community if you don't like it do let me know and obviously Obviously, I would have to change it because you guys are in charge of um, of the project. Um, this is what I was saying about the foliage. It's not really finished along this side. Uh, it really does need sorting out at some point. But uh, like I say, I just run out of time, basically. Uh, we've just done some nice sort of fencing, some very sort of generic stuff where the African area is concerned. And then, yeah, just a nice plant. Up. There's a nice little bench that's sunk in here. So hopefully our guests will sit there. Uh, and I think it would be like a cool little photo opportunity for the guests and that's one of the reasons uh why i did it now we walk for up this way ladies and gentlemen and uh you know this up here is the main sort of walk for africa that's going to go off into the sort of bigger area of the african park i think we're going to have to drop this down sort of like um we're going to have to drop the level of the terrain down at some point because we don't want it to stay and stick on one level we've got very very subtle terrain differences in this zoo but i do think we need something that's a bit more extreme stream soon and i think we're going to definitely have to do it up here but as you walk along ladies and gentlemen again you can see some foliage just not quite finished uh this is our sort of main sort of uh main pathway and i will sort of we'll, we'll do a loop and we'll come back on ourselves so you can see what i've been doing up here basically uh but yeah you would go this way for the wild dogs i am thinking potentially we put a sign for the wild dogs sort of in here i think it might be quite nice because this is like a, a sort of why t-junction type thing uh here for the wild dogs now we can go this way we'll take you this way first uh so you walk around this way which is really really cool some nice theming with the fence and whatnot really gone in quite heavy with you know the theming in this area you all really wanted me to do that and so i've really really listened i think the flower beds and stuff are really like i have to say obviously it's me that's built it but i do have to say for myself i've been very very clever about the way i've done flowering and the planting and the flower beds because it it really just disguises all of the fencing um, and it just really immerses you in the area which is uh, really really nice if you think about all these trees that sort of border the fence and stuff it's all at the back that you know you really can't see any of the staff buildings obviously this is the dogs building which we will get into but you can't really see much of it and i've really done i think in my opinion i've done a really good job to kind of disguise all that really sort of ugly stuff that you know zoos try to disguise obviously we got a 
uh, viewing area here. Um, we've uh, a covered one. Um, obviously, it is blighty. We do get rain. We did need something like this. Um, the floor was something that we discussed in the live stream, and it was something that really, really got on me nerves. I've got wood in here. I really like it. It's something so different. Like so, it's completely different to what we've done so far. So I've got wood quite heavy in this area. Sort of some recycled metals and whatnot. Uh, this is actually from the Australia pack, and I have to say it's so versatile in this area. Really fits in with the African ideas. Um, I do want to get some more education on here. I would like to get sort of like a map and a map of Africa and then do like a little dot and you know the areas that the wild dogs can be found and whatnot I would really like to get another one on there this was the whole reason for this this was going to be sort of like our wild dog educational wall and that's why we sort of built it we actually did this in the live stream just obviously I've run out of time like I keep saying and um, you know I don't want to sound like a broken record but yeah there's just little bits and bobs that I, I didn't get done but uh, yeah if you walk up to the viewing area the adults look over this this is for our kiddos to look through um, because we realized it was actually a bit high and uh, yeah this is the view that you get of the wild dogs um, uh, habitat basically i really really like this habitat i think it is definitely one of my favorites that i've ever ever done in planet zoo like and that is that's quite a big thing to say because anyone that watched highland zoo i did some amazing projects in that one and i think like the the, the south american tropical house that we've done in this zoo is like just on another level as well but this honestly is just one of my favorite habitats that i've done i've had so much fun doing this and um i can't wait to basically get into the next project because i feel really inspired at the moment uh, with the way that I'm doing stuff but uh, yeah I think it's a really really pretty sort of um, enclosure um, I built like a den down here I thought this would be a really cool place to kind of watch the dogs asleep in like the den and whatnot and um, you know they do burrow so I wanted it to look very sort of you know like like they've, they've burrowed it sort of uh, you know the terrain differences are quite extreme uh, it does have to be said in this um, enclosure but it's something I, that's one of the reasons I think I really really like this uh, I really like this enclosure and then you can also sort of take a look at this way as well. I've really disguised all this up with some really unique sort of fencing ideas. Um, I, I kind of was watching another YouTuber and this uh, inspired me, uh, this fence, because it is quite a realistic thing that zoos would do, basically. So, yeah, really, really like it. I will take you into the nuts and bolts of the habitat in a moment, but I want to take you through all of the guest areas first. So if we come back this way and we walk up here... You come to another sort of viewing area, ladies and gents, heavily planted, because what I wanted to do was I wanted to disguise ma the majority of this. I didn't want you to really be able to look through here. I wanted there to just be designated viewing areas. Uh, and so you walk up this way. Um, this was a really open area, so I just I realised to myself I need to get some shade in here, so I've put some trees. Uh, and we're probably going to continue these trees along this fencing, so that will create some shade as well. Otherwise, this would just bake this area completely completely and uh that's something you really don't want to be running into those sorts of problems uh in the zoo so yeah you come to another viewing area but first i'll take you through all of the guest stuff so obviously we've got some nice benches and some uh you know flower pots and whatnot just to really decorate the area up and then you come over here we've got another sort of educational wall uh this one is a bit more sort of african themed as you can see i tried to get this nice pattern at the top uh and obviously we've got a nice donation bins and whatnot and uh again just really really you know cool stuff really sticking with this theme throughout the zoo something i really want to do and so yeah i really really love the way it's come out and the good thing about this is you know you look uh this way and you really can't really see the perimeter fences and whatnot again i've used that same fence idea but it's so heavily foliage and whatnot you can't really see behind where um you know all the staff sort of area is and that's one of the big things that we we try to do um you know as we're trying to you know go a bit more realistic so as you can see work our way along and this is sort of the the views that you get of uh, of the zoo and you know you can see stuff at the back so you can see staff gates you can see you know shutter doors and whatnot but it's subtle you kind of, they're not really obvious they're not really in your face and i think because of the way it's decorated it kind of takes away from that anyway so um you know uh i think we've done a pretty pretty good job again it's you know uh, the, the terrain levels are deep we had to do that because obviously they're a predator lots of uh, extra sort of security and whatnot and um i just i'm really really happy with the way 
all these areas have turned out. If we were to work our way round this way, uh, obviously this way will go further into the African area. This is uh, obviously un fences and whatnot all need to be done. This is all star facility back here. Um, we've now joined this all up. Um, so what I've done is I've got a staff gate, a bigger fence for obviously cars coming in and out. One of the reasons why I've kept this so wide and I've done this here at this point is obviously we want to be able to bring cars through and they need to be able to turn and whatnot. But if you come this side, this is obviously the back of the Gemsbok. And so we now have staff path through this way. It all joins up. Another route for our staff to, you know, basically get into this area of the facility. We are obviously going to add some staff sort of access points back here. It's probably, you know, a staff access point behind all of this foliage and whatnot at a later date so that, you know, we can actually get to the wild dogs a lot quicker. Because at the moment, the staff are having to walk out of here. Uh, they come all the way down here, up this way, around here, and then back where the Jaguars are. That's the only route in at the moment. So do need to work on something back here once we unlock all of this stuff. And we are going to obviously join these roads up anyway at a later date. Again, I might take this road a bit deeper. Um, I might not do it at this angle. I might actually see this road here, take it off at that angle, and then come that way. But... It's all decisions that I've kind of made, um, why I've been building, because obviously things you know, change, your perception of things change completely. But yeah, this is all joined up, which is fantastic. And then um, I added some of these guys up here, because I just felt like we had a lot of empty space and we needed some fillers. And so yeah, I've just added another one of these, basically. Uh, just nice space filler aren't they at the end of the day i know they're not really they don't work they're not serviceable and whatnot but i just like the fact that they fill the space and then obviously this is all going to get mulched and we're going to add some planting and whatnot in here and that's going to all look really lovely and again the same is going to happen with all of this as well ladies and gents so that's sort of like the guest areas that's where they look at the animals now let me take you in to where you know our staff work and where the animals are housed and whatnot so first and foremost let's take a real good look at their habitat obviously the terrain differences are the big obvious one high at the back really low at the front in front of the viewing areas we don't want the animals to be able to you know get at the guests or anything like that they are predatory at the end of the day um and then just some nice big sort of heavy foliage the areas that these animals are found in the wild they make dens in and around some really sort of heavy dense um, foliage and uh, i wanted to try to recreate that to some extent in the habitat but still leaving plenty of open space so that you can see them um they aren't the biggest of animals but they do actually require a lot of room and um you know we actually when we were building this live on stream it was a lot smaller than this i'm glad that it was brought to my attention it needed to be a bit bigger and i like the shape of the habitat as well it's sort of like a, a triangle of sorts um but this back here um is actually part of the habitat but doesn't sit in the main one and that was a big thing that i wanted to I wanted to try basically because it is quite a realistic way of doing this sort of stuff and I've pulled it off and I've, I've pulled it off in quite a good fashion. I really think it looks nice because when you look, because of the foliage in these gaps, it really disguises all that stuff back there, which is nice. Again, same can be said over in this area. Uh, but yeah, just bushes, terrain differences are all nice. Like As you can see, it's just a gentle slope up towards the back. Um, I've gone with a difference of, you know, rocks and woods and all sorts of different things. Uh, you know, it's kept with the temperate plants in here because that's what we're doing uh, with this project. We're trying to stay as, you know, realistic as possible. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, just a real mix of grass and dirt and all that sort of stuff. This is a better look at the den. So rocks all around the side, uh, you know, obviously to support the ground and whatnot. The den is down here. We've got, uh, you know, some so, apologies if you hear Rolo kick off. I think someone's just rung the doorbell. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, toys and stuff. And then they can actually access it from the top. And so I decided to put this on here. It would be strong enough to kind of take their weight and whatnot. But yeah, you can see what a difference there is in the terrain from here to here. Um, obviously all the corner and whatnot and yeah just really really happy with it ladies and gents now the staff door is over here now obviously we can't put a secondary door on this because the staff won't be able to access the um, habitat but in real life um, with predatory um, stuff like this um, I know for a 
for a fact that when I was having a look at Colchester, their hyena is this sort of double door idea. And um, your zookeepers are actually standing there and pass treats and food and stuff through these and feed the animals that way sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's a double door sort of idea. Just uh, it basically keeps your staff safe um, and gives them a chance to you know lock the other animals up and whatnot. Um, and so I wanted to try this, and I think it looks it actually looks pretty cool. It really really does and then i've gone with this double sort of fenced idea because again this is quite a realistic thing with a walkthrough and we've shut the doors now the doors are a bit wider than i would have liked but again you have to remember this is a computer game and it's just the nature of the way it works but it does look pretty cool and the dogs do use it and as you can see there's one in the house housing uh, back there so it is pretty cool and again it works in a double this side and it's just all foliaged up and uh you know it's a good way to disguise stuff now um we'll go this way first so this is a bit of a staff sort of uh, entry point. We've left this open in case cars and trailers ever need to get in here. Obviously, this is where the staff access the habitat, and this is where they access the housing, um, which is pretty cool. Now, there's a kitchen in here, so I haven't added a kitchen here because they're so close, there was no need to do it. Um, so, yeah, instead, we've just used that. But there's huge terrain differences here, so we've had to put some steps in, um, all foliaged up around this way. This is a good place to come and, you know, look at the dogs before you was you know you would let them through and whatnot um so that's uh that's a pretty good viewing area for your zookeepers which again is very realistic and again up this end we have got uh, a gate in case zookeepers ever needed to access this part of the uh of the enclosure uh you know for whatever reason again very much in the on, on the side of realism so now let's head in to the uh, wild dogs house and i am very happy with how this has turned out everyone so just so you know i'm really happy with how this has turned out so as you can see on the outside uh there is obviously a bit of a weird shape here this is sort of a fake storeroom i've just put a door here there's nothing inside it i'm gonna be honest with you but it's like a fake storeroom basically um so we do have that but uh yeah your staff would walk around uh, this way and as you can see ventilation and whatnot the only thing i I haven't added which i've just realized is lights i need to add some lights along this part i've done it in the main rooms but just not along here um and so yeah this is this is um this is the indoor section and now someone said you've got to get this right dan you've got to be realistic about this and um i tried and I think I've succeeded. Now, the good thing about this is, from what I was reading, is that um, some because of the way these doors are, you could place crates on these doors. Lift, dog would go in crate. Because we've got this, they can be carried out. So I've done a really good job. I've basically succeeded here where I failed with the Jaguar house. And that's definitely going to need a rework. Because when I look at this, I'm, it's, it's so much more satisfying to me. Um, getting the realism on point. Um, but as you can see, there's doors for three different rooms. This one in the middle, uh, we have got doors here as well. Because the dogs can pass from room to room. Obviously, we're going to shut this one off in the middle because it just, you know, there's just no need to have as much, you know, indoor space as uh, as we've got. Um, but yeah, the staff would work around this way, and then the staff have doors that they can obviously access the animals to. There are sort of pipes on the wall to clean the uh, habitats out and whatnot. And uh, again, you will see uh, we've got another one up here. And they're very basic indoors. It's concrete on the floor, um, some toys. We have got grates because obviously we want to be able to clean them out and whatnot. And just some bedding and some lighting and whatnot. And they just work really, really well. And the dogs can pass through these doors they uh, don't really spend a lot of time back here. It's just literally through the doors, out this way, and into the exhibit. And the nice thing about their exhibit as well is that, uh, you know, because of the way the foliage is, uh, they're not greeted by thousands of guests looking at them straight away. It's a pretty nice, calm way into the exhibit. And that, ladies and gents, is the Wild Dog exhibit. And I'm absolutely buzzing with how how it turned out i absolutely love it uh that even the hard shell i've used different materials this is most of this is all from the australia pack shows you how versatile the pieces are from that pack uh, and again the the road it comes down this way um and it all just it just works so nice together all the foliage hides a lot of stuff um 
and yeah i'm just in love absolutely in love and i think you can all probably appreciate why now it's one of my favorite habitats and so now, ladies and gents, we finish uh, with some live action. Now, I don't think we're going to have any work to do with the animals. You're going to see money is uh, it's coming down quite rapidly. We're under 500,000 now, uh, which is a big deal. By the way, we have three painted dogs. Um, if you want to rename the dogs, feel free to get the names in. We've got one male and two females. Um, so, yeah, feel free to get your new names in, should you wish, and I'll be happy to rename them after uh, any of the name suggestions that you throw in. Um, I'm very, very much, you know, you know, in line with doing that because it gives each animal a bit more of a personal feel in the zoo. But uh, as you can see, two are out on habitat and one is in the shed having a sleep. Um, we do have a zookeeper assigned to this. I've already done that. Um, and they have a new sort of wild dog uh work zone so they very much just look after these animals which is decent because we know these animals are going to be serviced very very well um so i don't think we're going to have any animal management to do because we've not really been moving forward in time recently um and really i should probably be paused now but uh, i've played a press play already but yeah i don't think we're going to have any animal management to do because um yeah we We've not really been moving anywhere. We're not going forward in time or whatnot. So dehydrated. Hmm, that's interesting. That is interesting. Why are you not getting water? We'll have to... You know what? I'm going to pause while I check that. Um, but yeah, the rest of the animals should be fine. I don't think... You know, frogs, nothing's really been breeding because we've been paused for so long now that nothing's been breeding, nothing's really been, you know, coming of age or anything like that. So I've not really had to worry too much about any of this. I do need to go through the lemurs at some point, though, and probably rehome some of those guys. Um, we'll just take a quick look at the staff uh, and see if any training needs doing. Yep, you need some training. Um, you need some training. You need some training. Uh, you do, you do, you do. Um, this is where our money's going, by the way, because they are quite pricey uh, once you get them trained to a certain level. But the better they're trained, the better they deal with uh, with the zoo's problems and whatnot. So um, there is that. You probably noticed there were a few things missing, security cameras and things like that. I understand that I do need to go around the whole zoo and add all of that. Um, basically, my plan this week is to spend uh, an evening just going around the zoo uh, and going through all of the comments from the zoo tour episode and doing all the small jobs. I wanted to get this episode out, so we had a Sunday episode um, you know, and you had something to look forward to, basically. And I really think that um, we've smashed it out of the park this week. Your ideas, my building, we are the dream team, aren't we, everybody? Uh, yeah, I want to know why this animal isn't getting water. we got the water there, so should be. It should be. That's very, very odd uh, why that is the case. I might have to add another sort of water point in this habitat at some point point then um i'm really not sure what to do with this space here so if anyone's got any ideas that would be very much appreciated um and then yeah we're not going to worry too much about this space down here i think we'll leave this empty this is very much uh, done this area apart from the planting or whatnot so i would imagine in next week's streams and next week's episode we will be moving in to north america and i know lots of people are going to be really really happy about that so my friends what you do need to be doing is in that comment section below start leaving your comments about the animals that you would like to see first and your ideas for habitats and so on and so on restaurants shops anything like that feel free to let me know your ideas my friends but um i am done and dusted today i'm going to do something a bit different i'm going to sign out right now and i'm going to leave you with a few cinematic shots of the african dog exhibit we've got the time to do it because obviously the episode is a bit shorter where we're not unlocking zones and doing all that usual stuff and going through hundreds of comments so yeah we're gonna have a bit of time my friends i really hope you like what i've done with the project so far uh, i really hope you like the start of africa uh do leave me your critiques do leave me your praise obviously if there's anything you 
you think needs changing uh, let me know that in the comment section below as well and I'll be sure to work that into the streams and the episodes again ladies and gentlemen this week's streams are going to be live on YouTube not Twitch I've made the decision I'm going to start fresh on Twitch from the beginning of November to give myself a bit more time to get it all organized because I have been very very busy in my personal life subscribe if you are new that would be very much appreciated drop me a like on the video remember 50 likes we open a special square uh, but do drop me a like on the video that would be appreciated as well check the description box for stuff like community stuff um, socials discord all of that you can become a bigger part of the project and the family that we are building here on Dan XG but my friends until next time I will see you all later enjoy whatever you're doing with the rest of your day and I'll see you real real soon